Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to wrap up this series of videos that I've been doing on, uh, on wiring your model railroad with a look at something called power management. So today what I want to do is talk about what power management is, uh, how it works, and how you can use it on your model railroad to get the most out of your boosters and uh, circuit breakers. So stick around and we'll go ahead and get started. So just what is power management? Well, power management is a system that allows you to spread the power out from one or more boosters all over your entire layout and actually to balance the way that that power is used so that you're not uh, uh, buying more boosters and more power than you actually need. Now, just as an example, back in the late 1990s, when uh, my railroad club up in uh, Northern Virginia converted to DCC, we had something like eight different blocks on the model railroad. So what we did at that time, and this was before power management days, um, we just bought eight, or we bought a command station and seven boosters. Now, that added up to something on the order of 40 amps. Now, there's no way that we could ever use 40 amps. I mean, you know, 20 amps would probably have been overkill. But, you know, that's the method that we had to go about at the time. And we probably could have gone with shorter blocks by combining some and some other finessing. But at the time, DCC was still pretty new, and nobody knew exactly what they were doing. So we just went with what was in place already. So let's go ahead and, and look at a way to... Uh, implement a system that would have allowed us back then to get away with 20 amps worth of boosters instead of 40. And the easiest way for me to explain that to you is in terms that you probably are fairly uh, familiar with. And that is the uh, circuit breaker panel box in your house. And these are used in all of the, the United States. I assume Canada has similar uh, setups and you know most of, of uh, Europe as well. And the rest of the world have some form of you know, circuit breakers or fuses or something. At any rate, if you take a look at a circuit breaker panel box, and I'm gonna show an image of one here, and I'll point out it's not my panel box. What I wanna show you in this image that I'm, I'm putting up now is a typical circuit breaker box. Now, in my particular case, I have a 200 amp service, which means I have 200 amps of electricity coming into my house to power all of the circuits in the house. And that 200 amps is spread over 26 separate circuits. And these are circuits, you know, like the heat pump, the clothes dryer, the water heater. Those are, you know, all up around 30 amps each. And then we have lesser ones that are about 20 amps each for, um, things like kitchens and kitchen appliances and the like. Most of the circuits in the house, though, are rated at about 15 amps each. But at any rate, if you take all 26 of those circuit breakers that I just talked about, and you add up the individual values of each breaker, that comes to 460 amps. So how am I getting away with using 400, with with 460 amps worth of breakers with a 200 amp power supply. Uh, does that make sense? Well, it's called power management. And the assumption is that at any one point in time, you're never gonna have every light, every switch, every appliance all operating at the same time. At the best, you might have half of them and, and not even that many. Plus, in the United States, the code, the building codes, generally limit uh, circuits to no more than about 75 to 80 percent of the rated value of the circuit breaker. So with a 15 amp breaker, you really should not be operating it at more than about 12 amps continuous. You can go to 15 amps in spikes and not trip the breaker possibly, but you know for most of the time you're only going to be using a smaller amount. And that's power management. That's how it works. So how does that work on your model railroad? Well, let's take a look down here at what I've got on the benchtop, and hopefully that'll explain it for you. Okay, this right here is a Digitrax PM42. And what that does, it's, it does the same thing as the PSX4 that I've shown you in previous videos, and, and individual uh, circuit breakers for DCC that I covered 
in a, a previous video, and I'll put a link directly to that above me here. But at any rate, the PM42 takes output from a booster like this DB150 that you feed in, and it splits it into four separate circuits, just like the circuits in a household uh, 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 breaker box. So think of this as my 200 amp power coming in, and this is my uh, circuit breakers in my panel box. So it takes it in, splits it out into four separate circuits. And these would be four separate blocks on my RIP model railroad. Now, on the Piedmont Southern, I have uh, eight separate blocks. So I have the PM42 to cover half of it. I have the PSX4 to cover the other half. Okay, so each individual block has its own, you know, power, and it's isolated from the other. So if a short occurs in one, it's not going to take down the booster, or in the other case, by the, the command station, and everybody else can keep on running while we figure out what's going on in that one block that uh, has gone dead. And with the um, with the PM42 and the PSX and all these other types of circuit breakers, there are ways for you to set the trip point uh, for the, each one of these breakers. So with the PM42, you can go from one and a half amps up to 12 amps, and that's in one and a half amp increments. So you can go one and a half, three, four and a half, etc. The difference about the PM42 is it's designed as a complete circuit board that is not independent. So if you set this for three amps, then that means that each circuit is set at three amps. You can't have one set at one and a half, one set at three, one set at four and a half, whatever. Uh, you can only have one setting for the board itself. Now you can have multiple PM42s with you know different uh, settings on each of those. The great thing I like about the PSX4 is they are essentially four individual circuits, so that you can set one at you know one one and a half or whatever. Uh, each board can have its own uh, trip point, and that allows you to better uh, balance the power on your model railroad. Now, one basic assumption in all of this is that, just like your circuit breaker box in your house, the total value of all of the settings for the amperages on your circuit breakers uh, can easily exceed what your uh, booster or uh, command station can put out. So. In my case, I have eight amp uh, boosters and uh, command station, and I might have that uh, my my uh, output here uh, totaling up to 12 or you know 14 amps. But the assumption is that at no point in time will the total load created on all of these different blocks and all of these different circuit breakers actually exceed what the booster and command station are capable of providing. So it, it, at any one given time then, you know, it's assumed that all of the locomotives that you plan to operate are not going to actually be running. They're either going to be sitting still waiting for a clear track ahead or for some other action doing some switching, uh, or they're moving very, very slowly and, no, and, and are not using anywhere near the amperage that you have assigned to the four different blocks on your PM42 or your PSX4 or whatever else you're using as a circuit breaker. And as long as you meet those assumptions, you won't have any problems at all. Now, if down the road you find out that, you know, things are not exactly as you had planned and you are using more power in a certain block or in all of your blocks than you had anticipated, then that's when you have to go back and do some rebalancing. So let's talk about balancing. Balancing power can be difficult because you have to kind of guess up front how many trains you're going to be running in each block on average and multiply that times say, you know, 0.3 amps or 0.4 amps depending on the age of your locomotives. And then a, come up with an idea, a guesstimate of how many amps you're going to need in each block. And then you have to set the power or the trip point for each block in the PSX4 or come up with one value for the PM42. 
And that's basically how power management works. It's just like the circuit breakers in your uh, domestic panel box. You've got 15 amp power uh, amperage uh, breakers, you've got 20 amp breakers, 30 amp breakers, 35 amp breakers, you know, in order to balance the power needs of each one of your circuits in your house. It's the same way with the blocks on a model railroad and using these types of devices, circuit breakers. And that allows you to spread the power out and it allows you to get away with using uh, a single booster where you might normally opt to go with uh, two or three and spread the power out that way. Uh, it's just a lot simpler method to go about. It's cheaper in the long run because you don't have to buy a bunch of boosters and power supplies and everything else in order to do this. You just use one booster and one circuit board that splits the power out into four separate circuits that go out to your individual blocks. Uh, it, it works very well uh, in a lot of scenarios. Um, I've mentioned before when I talked about the ballast lamps that I have a friend with a much, much larger layout than mine. And uh, we typically on that layout will run, you know, 10, 12 trains at the same time. And on that layout, he has one uh, eight amp uh, command station and that's all it is that powers that layout. And uh, he has 30 ballast lamps uh, distributed around the layout. Um, and that is used instead of using the uh, PM42 or the PSX4. And that allows him to, uh, you know, to balance the power needs within each of his 30 blocks on that layout. Now, some of his blocks are basically sections of yards, for example, that are broken up into, into four individual sections. Uh, so it's really not a, a, a what we, one might normally consider a block, but it does allow him to spread the power out efficiently. And, you know, somebody had asked me, well, what do you do uh, if, you know, you need more power than two and a half amps on a block? Well, you know, that's a limitation of ballast lamps. And that's where you can go with these types of devices, these electronic circuit breakers instead. Or you can simply break the block down into smaller subsections that can operate off of two and a half amps. And it's your choice to make as to whether you want to spend the extra money to buy a PSX4 or a PM42 or the Volt Scooter uh, circuit breakers or any of the others that I showed in, in that br uh, video on circuit breakers for your model railroad. So be aware of how that works. And if you have questions, please toss them out here in the comments because I'm you know happy to try to explain this. And as I said earlier, I explained this in an article that was published in Model Railroader several years ago. I covered it in my Wiring Your Model Railroad book that I showed in the video the other day. And it's also in my uh, uh, DCC Projects and Applications Volume 4 book, all available from Kalmbach or just look up you know, Larry Puckett on Amazon Books and see if it's available there. So for more details, that's one way to do it. The main problem, though, is adjusting to, uh, to get to the point where everything runs smoothly and you don't overdo it in any given block. It's sort of like knowing that you don't run two hair dryers in the same bathroom at the same time because you'll pop your circuit breaker. Well, the same thing is true here, except one thing you can do here is you can adjust each individual block and make adjustments after the fact. So you might up front think you only need three amps in one big yard area and find out that you're tripping your, your circuit breakers. Well, it's easy enough to go back and make adjustments later and increase the value of the amperage uh, trip point uh, for that circuit breaker for that specific block that keeps tripping. So it's an iterative approach when you're doing this. You have to make some assumptions up front as to how much uh, amperage each block is going to need, and then go ahead and increase or decrease the amperage to that block after the fact as you do some operations and find out you need more or less power. It would be the same as in your house. 
is if you, uh, it, it's more difficult in a household situation because you can't go back and change the wiring. Uh, whereas with, uh, with our model railroads, as long as you put in the robust enough wiring up front, you can change the amperage uh, uh, supplied to each block after the fact by simply making the changes, programming the changes in these uh, circuit breakers. And all of these are fairly straightforward, easy programming changes to make, okay? They use, it's just like uh, programming a decoder because basically that's what they have built into them is some sort of accessory decoder type of a, of a, of a circuit. And you can just go in and make changes uh, after the fact, after you've operated for a while this way. So that's it for today. Uh, like I said, hit me in the comments if you've got questions. And uh, I think you'll find this approach, you know, something that you can use even on a very small layout, like a four by eight foot layout. You know, you can break it up into four blocks and be able to balance the power use in each one of those blocks using a PM42 or a PSX4 or whatever. And it allows you to get away with using one booster or one command station for your model railroad uh, on the smaller end. And for the larger model railroads, you know, you can go with multiples of these in order to be able to balance power needs across a very large layout. So give some thought to that one over the weekend. Well, that's my take on power management. I hope you find a, a useful way to use it on your model railroad. And remember, it's not something uh, just for big model railroads. You can use it on a four by eight foot layout as well uh, to help spread the power around and protect your blocks and, and command stations and boosters from uh, short circuits and, and the type of thing that happens when people run through turnouts and other in incidents that give you a short on the layout. So go ahead, give that a try. And if you have any questions, please go ahead, add them to the comments. Have a good weekend and uh, wear your mask, avoid the virus and uh, stay healthy. Bye now.